Hey, what's up guys? It's Left here and today I am back bringing you guys another Vainglory video. This time today we are playing Kroll with my teammate um, Poke Flames in the jungle. He's Finn, I'm Kroll. He's my support and we have a scarf in the lane. So in this game today I am going to be playing a new kind of Kroll. So as most of you probably know, Breaking Point got changed around a ton in update 1.14 to where it no longer stacks based on seconds in combat, it now stacks on weapon damage done per second. So it's um it's way different now, which means that um which means that you basically you you, you just can't have it as your only offensive item on, anymore, which means the old breaking point tank build that Kroll has or that Kroll has always had is pretty much gone. So we are going to have to innovate some sort of new Kroll build. And in this game today, what I came up with was Tension Bow, Aftershock, and Alternating Current. Now, before 1.14, this would probably seem like the worst build ever, but, I mean, it, it actually works. So how it, how it sort of works is you max Dead Man's Rush first, and after you're done maxing that, you max Smite. You don't upgrade your, you don't put three points in your ultimate on Kroll. It doesn't do anything except to give it a little bit more damage, and the point of the sword throw isn't even damage anyway. So, you don't max your um sword. So, what this um build is gonna do, it's gonna it's gonna keep Kroll's inherent attack speed. You're gonna want to blaze and salvo to start out, and you're gonna want to rush tension bow once you have that blaze and salvo. So, what tension bow is gonna do, it's Dead Man's Rush applies on hit basic attack effects, so when you, you when you use Dead Man's Rush as a gap closer, you're going to be doing a ton of damage, and that early game power spike on Tension Bow really, like, it, it compensates very well for Kroll's weak early game, and especially because you're maxing out your, um, your, what is it, you're maxing out your Dead Man's Rush first, you're going to get a, an incredible burst out of that when you get that Tension Bow. So, then, carrying on with that, when you get Aftershock, Aftershock is going to be even more, like, Aftershock is just even more burst, like, it's also a ba on, hit, on hit basic attack effect, so when you use that, it's also going to go on Dead Man's Rush, so your Dead Man's Rush is going to start to be procking two different, um, it's going to be procking two different burst on hit basic effects, Aftershock and Tension Bow, plus Aftershock is a tank breaker, it does percent damage based on percent health. So when you're getting those aftershocks, it's going to be um, it's going to be really, really good in conjunction with the tension bow you already have. So once you have those two, then you're going to want to upgrade that blazing salvo in an alternate into an alternating current. But also, as I or as as is per usual with Kroll, you want to get a shiver steel in there like somewhere in your build doesn't matter like if it's first or first second third fourth well it probably shouldn't be first tension bow is first but I mean, don't get don't wait till the last don't wait till like the 20th minute to get shiver steel make sure you get it in there somewhere because it it helps a lot on Kroll. so next the alternating current it's going to up your attack speed give you more crucial power and overall just kind of um well Dead Man's Rush, Dead Man, the, the barrier on Dead, Man, Dead Man's Rush raises on, um, with Crystal Power, so you're going to be getting a ton of different things with this alternating current. You're going to be getting more attack speed to deal your Spectral Smite stacks faster. You are going to be, a, you're going to be getting a larger Dead Man's Rush barrier, more damage on Dead Man's Rush, more damage on Spectral Smite, and more damage on your ultimate, but that doesn't really matter very much. So. I mean, the alternating current, it, it does everything that Kroll needs in one item. More barrier, more smite, more um, more barrier, more smite, and more attack speed. So, I don't, it, it really just amplifies every single part of what makes Kroll Kroll. So, it's a, it's a really good pickup for the late game. So, you'll see I get it in this video, eventually, and it ends up working out pretty well. And next, um, let me talk about the, well, actually, I'm done talking about Kroll. So let me talk to you guys about something that happened to me yesterday in the game. So what happened was, um, so I'm getting on, getting online for a couple of ranked matches, and Guard messages me, and he's like, please join. 
I join and it's him and Jai Pete. And if you guys don't know Jai Pete, what are you doing with your life? He is definitively and undoubtedly the best Saw NA. There is no Saw better than Jai Pete. He's he's an incredible Saw. There's like there's no he's unparalleled as Saw. And Saw is all he plays, no matter what. I've never seen him play anything else. So and I think it's in season he was season zero Vainglorious just playing Saw. Insta locking him and like POA and Vainglorious Q. So since I was like at the time I was like one win into Simply Amazing Gold. And so I joined up this party with Guard and Jai Pete and Guard's like, alright, we're gonna do the cancer team. I'm like, what's that? He's like, well, we're gonna go Adagio Arden and Saw. Because Jai Pete is there. I mean, what's he gonna do besides play Saw? I don't even think he plays any other heroes, but we go in, we we it goes into draft mode because um it goes into draft mode because we because we're a party of three. And we save Saw for our last pick, of course, because we know no one on their team is gonna pick Saw. So what we do then is um we just pick Saw last and then we go into the match. And since we were running the push comp and they were running a Kashka um Ringo Arden comp that only has one stun, and I'm just remember I'm the Arden here. So I mean, I'm always going to be the support on this team of Guard and JP, two incredible carries. But so <laughs> it was pretty amazing because I was the support. I was just Vanguard JP block stuff for him. I mean, he already had two reflex blocks because that's how he rolls. But we ended the game in about um, we ended the game in I think it was 12 minutes. We had we were we broke into their base in 10. That means we took three turrets that quickly, and I mean it was pretty much game from like five minutes on. We already had one turret down at five minutes, and I mean I know that those enemies I've seen them before. I know that they're POA, and I think one of them was Vainglorious, but they just couldn't handle the saw. So we go we get out of that game. We go into the next one, and we find some people that I know are Pinnacle of Awesome. We find. Um, I can't remember all of their names, but it was Spanky. Um, let's see, it was Spanky. It was actually, let me go into my photo album and pull it up. I screenshotted that. But let's see, it should be in here somewhere. Yeah, it was. Oh, the next game was Liberation. We were playing against Liberation, Real X, Hero, Zion, and Noob X. And that game didn't go so well because I, I didn't buy Atlas, and I should have on that Ringo. That, we had to close that one out in 22 minutes. And then the next game, we played against two Vainglorious players in Lumanus and Eco Rocks, and then Spanky, who is Pinnacle of Awesome. That game ended in 10 minutes and 34 seconds. So, needless to say, it was a pretty good night for Ranked. We, we tore up the fold. We lost a couple of games to a Sky and a Ringo. Guard played a little bit of Petal, which was hilarious. Um, he's a really good pedal actually, and she does really good at clearing out the jungle so that JP can push, but it was amazing, and long story short, I guess what I'm trying to tell you here guys is I am one win away from Pinnacle of Awesome right now, so I think after I'm done recording this commentary, I am going to go play a ranked match, and I may or may not hit Pinnacle of Awesome today. If I do, I'll probably screen record myself going out of the match and then going um, going out of the match and then seeing the elo because I'm I'm definitively one win away. I mean that'd be just like a dream come true. I've been playing the game since May last year, and it would just be like a dream come true to hit Pinnacle of Awesome today. And, and I mean, if I did, I would probably, I probably just wouldn't rank for the whole rest of. The, actually, that's probably a lie because the season ends at like March one, and that's like a whole month of no ranked. But I would probably at least ranked for like not rank for like an entire week. But so yeah, that's where I am with Elo wise. And for the last like nine or so minutes left in this video, I w was thinking I could talk to you guys about pay to win, pay to win games. Now. I have been, um, like, I mean, Vainglory has really been all I have ever been playing on my, um, 
devices, phone, shield tablet. It's really been all I've played, and I mean, it doesn't really do it justice to just say that I'm always I've always been a Vanguard player. I used to play you. Know, I used to play Supercell games, Clash of Clans and Boom Beach. I have not touched those in um, months. At least, at least three months since I even went near Clash of Clans or Boom Beach. And there's a reason why. And that reason is pay to win. So, what I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about is pay to win games in general. So, with Clash of Clans, um, I was, I knew that the game was pay to win going in. I started it in like, in July of 2012, I think. And I knew the game was pay to win, but I was like, eh, whatever, I can do this without, I can do this without buying any of purchases, so I did. I did that for about two and a half years, or however long it is till like last November. So that, that's a pretty long time. So I was doing that and doing that, and then they announced the Town Hall 11 update for Clash of Clans. I read the notes, and I'm just like, alright, this is the last straw. I am just out of this game. I mean, they changed around so many things to just like only benefit people who are buying tons and tons and tons and tons of gems every day. So with that, I just kind of GTFO'd that game. And same thing with Boom Beach, although less so since there there's no guild and war in Boom Beach. I mean, there might be. I left the game a while ago, so. I mean, pay to win games. I played Clash of Clans, Boom Beach. I played a couple MMOs, Gameloft games, Modern Combat Five. I played for a little bit. Um, that one was fun. I liked I liked how skill based it was and how much stuff you could do. I mean, you can do stuff in Modern Combat Five without paying to win. But if you want the best guns, you can just like instantly get them by paying, which kind of which is kind of stupid. So I left that game because well, mostly because it's Gameloft and they. Um, the battery, it tore down my phone's battery by like 5% every two minutes, which is horrible. And I mean, I mean, when I started playing my, um, when I got my phone in the first place, then, I mean, I was playing all kinds of like the stereotypical pay to win games, like um, just those random Clash of Clans copycats that you see. I never did play those games that are like Game of War and Mobile Strike, I know for a fact that those are made by the same developers. Like, they don't want you to know, but those are definitely made by the same developers. You can tell in the format of their ads, they hire some celebrity to do it every time, usually a stupid one. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger's not stupid, but Kate Optimus. Oh, I don't even know if she has a brain. But, I mean, those games, I don't... If you play those and you spend that much money on them, I don't know. I can't even think of something to say to that. Like, it's just not. It's not good. It's unhealthy. Like, seriously, what are you doing, spending that much money on a crappy game? Those games have no graphics. They look like they were created by Potato. I mean, it's. <laughs> they're they're a laugh. They're they're the funniest thing like on the App Store. They're they're just stupid. But. I don't play any pay-to-win games anymore, and that said, I want to talk about Vainglory's market system and how how amazing it is, like compared to other App Store games. So, with Vainglory, it's um it's a really good market system because we have two resources, Glory and Ice, and you can do so many things with each one. Like, first, let's talk about Glory. Glory you can only get by playing matches. Now, glory is the glory is probably the better part of the store because it's you can only get it by playing games. Glory is there to um, reward the faithful players and the guys that don't really want to buy in at purchases because I mean you can get it whenever you want. You, all you got to do is play a game, and eventually you're gonna get what you want. It just won't be very fast. So with glory, it's just um, glory is just all around awesome. You can buy cards with it. You can buy heroes with it. You can't get heroes on early access or outright buy skins, but I mean, oh well. It's it's a non-premium currency, so what do you what do you want from it? So then there's ice, and ice is Vainglory's premium currency. It's the one that you it's the one you have to buy. It's the one that you have to um, it's the one that you pay real money for. So ice 
usually when I when I first started the game, I was like, oh great, it's gonna be pay to win. They got in that purchases, and I was like, I was blown away by the way they managed the market. So all of Vainglory's ice purchases, like, well, I mean, you can buy heroes with ice if you don't want to wait to save up the glory, but that's not overpowered. That's not pay to win because um. It's not pay to win because there's no OP, there's no like broken, there's no heroes that are OP enough to make the game pay to win. So, like, with Ice, it's, um, it's way better than most, when, than other games because when you're talking about like Clash of Clans, you buy gems, you can do anything you want in the game instantly. Whereas if you don't, it's like, oh yeah, you, you saved up for like three months to get all of this gold for, for an upgrade. Well, now you're going to wait two weeks for it to finish building. Vainglory is just like, okay, you want that tier one skin? All right, just pay five dollars and here you go. So, I mean, that's that's where Vainglory just gets so much better than the other models. All of the changes are cosmetic, except for the heroes, but that's not broken enough to make it pay to win. So, the changes are cosmetic, and the games the game is good enough so that it actually gets people wanting to buy the in-app purchases without like making it pay to win. Like when your game is good that you don't have pay to win in-app purchases and you, your game is so good that it can still make people want to buy those in-app purchases, that's when you're doing something right. Super Evil has made a game that, I mean, it's incredible because people are still buying the in-app purchases where if they're not pay to win, they're not like extraordinary in any sense. Well, I think skins are extraordinary, but someone who comes from Clash of Clans and is like a gem whale and just buys in-app purchases all day, they're gonna come to Vingler and be like, what are these in-app purchases for? I can't pay I can't pay to win. And that is what's beautiful about Super Evil's model, is that um you can you can still bring in all of the money without all of the cancer. <laughs> or the autism or the AIDS that you get from pay to win mark from that you get from pay to win marketplaces. So I guess what I'm trying to say is um they've done an amazing job with the market system and lots of people lots of people in the forums and YouTube comments are like skins cost too much. It takes too long to get skins. Well, I saved my glory for about 2 months straight. Did nothing with it except just save 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 save. I got 50,000 glory saved up, and you know what I did with it? I went straight from Cruel Tier 1 to Cruel Tier 3 that you're seeing in this video with that 50,000 glory. Skins do not cost too much. Tier 3 Cruel is such an amazing skin that, I mean, it, it deserves to, have, to be taken that long to get. So, I guess long story short, as this commentary is sort of wrapping up, I mean, well, I think it, um, it probably has already been said many times before, but I love Vainglory. They're doing such an amazing job with this game, and they just continue to please me every single day. The way that they, the way that the market is set up, the way that they interact with the community, just, just the way they do business at Super Evil. It, I've never seen it before in any game developer. I mean, they're so, they're small, they're, they're small enough so that they don't get tons of hate from irrational people and they're also small enough that they um they're small enough to they're they, they're just able to interact with the community at so many on so many levels and it's going to be interesting to see um how that plays out as Vingler gets bigger but I believe they can do it so that's going to be it for today's commentary guys hopefully you guys enjoyed if you liked it subs or leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you loved it and I will see you guys in the next video goodbye